Danny. Hello. So, what do you want now? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember on my first day at work, and I asked you a question about the gym at Madfest? Yeah. Our gyms, like for disabled people. The gym's not that accessible. I'd love to actually just create like a fully accessible gym and just show people like, how it should be done. That'd be like super fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, work definitely needs to be done in the fitness industry generally, but yeah, specifically gyms are not very good. well. Here we, here we go. I think it's about time we actually did a real gym session. Are we going to the gym? We're going to the gym. Let's go. Get out then. So here at the gym, first quick fire question is, what are your gym day essentials for you to get in and do your workout? Wake up mm -hmm. and turn up. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's it. I'm not overthinking it. Fair. You're lucky I'm here. <laughs> okay. Warm up questions. You ready? Yeah. Hit me. What's the best gym day of the week? Push, pull, legs, cardio, full body, etc. I was going to say what day, like an actual <laughs> physical day. Don't know, I'm quite loving it up there lately. Okay. But I don't mind a full body day either. Fair. Nice. Best time to go to the gym? Early morning, like before work time, lunch, evening, night. So, I go through phases. Right. Typically I'm an early morning girl before work, get it done yeah. at the way. What time is that? 5am, I know it's a bit disgusting, but gets me up, lets me have breakfast afterwards, it yeah. lets me set off for work, but I'm also, I do quite like like an evening, mm. an evening session, like after work. That's gross. I know, I know. It's but normally busy too, too, yeah, which isn't the one. And gym isn't the only way to be active. Are you doing any other things that get you active and get you moving? I try and go on a walk at lunch, nice. weather permitting, obviously. Hot girl walk? Always. <laughs> Gotta get the steps in. Yeah. And I'm thinking about starting swimming again. Nice. Which is quite nice. And then maybe we'll play football. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, let's go. Nice. Right, I think we've warmed up enough. I'm sweating actually. <laughs> let's move on. You have to find the first exercise we need to do. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Right, so talk me through what we're doing now. Why? Is this how you usually start your workout? Yeah, if I'm starting upper body, I always start with a lap pull down. I don't know why, I just feel like it works for the majority of my back, so it's always a good place to start. Oh, I heard that. Did you hear me clear? Yeah. Um, warmed up? Yeah, got the, up. the lats working. I think it's your turn. Oh no. Come on. A lot of people would use like music to like pop themselves up. I know for me, music is a massive thing in the gym. So what other ways do you kind of like pop yourself up to go? You say you just get up and get ready, but you know. Yeah, pretty much, I just get up and go. Just get up and go, just like, yeah, let's give it. I think it's just discipline. I've been working out for quite a long period of time now, and yeah. I know what effect it has on me, like both mentally and physically, and how it helps me manage my pain levels and stuff like that. So it's just part of my routine now. It's just something that I have to do. I know a lot of people like experience gym anxiety, and I know for me, when I first started, it was like a massive part of it. And like gyms aren't the most successful places yeah. for disabled people, yeah. did you ever experience any, like, gym anxiety? I know you said that you've been working out for a long time. Yeah, when I first started coming to the gym, I was like 18. Yeah. And it was like the scariest thing I've ever done, which says a lot because I've always been uh, involved in sport and stuff. Yeah. So I'm quite used to like working out and being active. Mm -hmm. but it was really scary. Like, I didn't know how to like use any of the machines. I couldn't like adjust any of the machines as well with one yeah. hand, like that's quite difficult. So yeah, I actually like used to, well, I still do go to the gym with my mom. Mm -hmm. And she's like my little support buddy. She's your gym buddy. Yeah. And yeah, she'd like really help me and like came with me because she knew that I wanted to go. And yeah, we've just been going ever since. Fair. Partnering up, partnering up with someone deaf all helps. Yeah, like, are you dying? <laughs> yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> I've done two sets. I know. <gasps> Go on. Go on, B. Okay, so we talked about gym confidence yeah. and gym anxiety and all those things. And like, we researched that 31% of disabled people say that their impairment makes them feel less confident. Bad experiences, negative attitudes were also common reasons as to why they wouldn't go to the gym or like why they feel kind of anxious going in. Do you have like any recommendations for either like how to overcome or make things like less scary? Like I know there's only so much we can control. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's hard. I think like I know like a big fear for me is always like making my disability worse as well. 
especially if I'm having like a bad pay, like pain flare up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come, work out and then just make it worse or like make it last longer. So I think like a big thing is always just listening to your body. I think when you have a disability, you know your body better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And you just have to have trust in that. And then I think outside of that, just being more confident in the gym, I think. Try and find someone to come with you if you can. I think yeah. that always helps. And then I think if possible, like maybe get like a trainer, like at least initially, just yeah. to like help you feel more confident and like figure things out and like teach you how to use the machines properly and stuff like that. Also reach out to the community. There's loads of gym goes within the disabled community and I'm sure loads of people got loads of good tips to pass on. Yeah, everyone hit Danny up. No, not me, not me. <laughs> I've got some stats for you. 70% of disabled people say they would like to be more active, but only 47% of disabled people actually think that physical activity and exercise is for someone like me. Talk me through. Yeah, I think, even when I think back to when I was younger, like playing football and stuff, I never ever saw anyone like me doing any type of physical activity. And I think when you can't see it, you just don't feel like you belong or you just don't think it's for you yeah. and that's why representation is so so important and obviously I think like generally representation for the disabled community has got considerably better but yeah. I think fitness and like working out and just exercise in general is maybe one area where we're still a little bit behind I mean obviously we have the Paralympics which is incredible but that's showcasing like absolute elite best in class world best talent yeah. and that's not going to be every disabled person like some people just want to work out to feel good make themselves feel a little bit better get a little bit stronger be a little bit more healthier and I think that is where the representation is lacking we actually have a stat to back this up 66 percent of disabled people said that advertising reassured them that they would be welcome in sport and these kinds of things so it just really like hones in on that point like why it's so important yeah it just it does make a lot of sense and given how big the disabled community is more customers you know more customers it just makes sense it just makes sense you there? <laughs> what are we doing now? Seed row, always a five. Yeah. It's up there for me, for sure. Why is it one of your faves? It just feels great. Nice. It just feels great. It just feels great. Yeah. That's what we do, we come to the gym to feel great. It doesn't have to be any deeper than that. I think generally, like, in terms of, like, fitness brands when it comes to clothing, I think that's definitely improved, but sometimes it can just feel a bit like a checkbox, and I think it needs to be, like, way deeper than that. I think it needs to, it needs to actually be support there for disabled athletes like outside of that as well like it's great featuring people in, in your campaigns and stuff like that but is your gym accessible is your fitness app does it have adapted workouts on do you have recipes that cater to certain like dietary requirements like all these extra things like massively make a difference and I think as well quite often within the fitness world it's particularly on like social everyone looks really buff yeah. and everyone looks super rich and that's really difficult to live up to sometimes so I think also having like realistic portrayals of like wellness and yeah. health and all of that is super important you can't yeah. just take part if you're like absolutely jacked like yeah. oh, we want just normal portrayals of everyday people yeah. working out having a great time and yeah I think that's super important it's a lot of pressure for people to try and live up to that kind yeah. of idealized image of someone that's healthy and like massive muscle yeah. But it's never going to happen for certain disabled people. Like for me, it doesn't matter what exercises I do, I've got really limited range of movement in my arm. And even if I can do the exercises, I don't have the nerves to actually build the muscle anyway. So I'm, I'm never going to get that idealised like, look of what a, a fitness influencer looks like. Two part question Are there any, any brands that you see are making good progress and that people can like learn from? And number two, how should brands then like try to start that journey if they already aren't like and if you're not seeing that? I think when I think of brands actually it's not a brand that pops to mind. Okay. I really love um, the marketing that this girl can does. Mm -hmm. I think it's really really great at like just showcasing everyday people working out, exercising, moving their body in a way that works for them yeah. and I think they do an incredible job at that. I think brands can get started in making sure their representation is accurate by actually speaking to the community and understanding their experiences, like their current experiences of what it's like within like the fitness and exercise world yeah. but also what they want for the future as well. I think that's super important. If you're not speaking with the communities you're never going to build a product or service that is like best suited for them. 
And I think it always just always starts with having like a really open and honest conversation and understanding their current experiences, where they're currently at, what would make things better. Yeah. Being vulnerable enough to start ground zero almost and be open to having that conversation. Nice. And we do that. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about how gyms and brands can be more inclusive and how they should be more representative and have that more normalised representation. And one way they can do that is through creators. So, are there any like disabled fitness creators that you really love and that, you know, show off that good message of like an everyday person enjoying yeah. fitness and not just like top and class athletes? I think, yeah, I mean, there's so many creators within the disabled creator space that feature like wellness and like fitness and all, all that kind of stuff. I think two main faves though that are like definitely up there for me. First is Weekster. She is from the US and she's got an upper limb impairment, hence why I'm a big fan. Yeah, I just think she's great. She just like shows her like workout routines and stuff like that. I really like her content. It just feels very like normal. You feel like you can do it which you've seen her do it, which I think is really great. And then I think for me, the other creator is Millie Pickles. Nice. Yeah, I think obviously she's super well known. Are you, are you struggling? Continue, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, obviously Millie's like one of the most well-known uh, yeah. within the industry, but I think she's super great at showing the highs and lows of like fitness, but also like living with a disability as well. I think she just, yeah, absolutely yeah. kills it. And I think she's great on like so many, so many campaigns and can, can work for so many brands as well. Okay, I think it's about time for a cool down. We did that. Smashed it. Smashed it. Smashed it. Up a workout. Complete. Done. Completed it, mate. Completed it, mate. So we talked about brands being yeah. accessible and inclusive, but also that falls on gyms and like making their spaces. One of that, how would you suggest and give tips for making gym spaces more inclusive and accessible to people? Oh, okay, good question. Mm. I think a lot of the times the machines are like super close together, mm. which can be really difficult to like just walk around. Yeah. And if you're in a wheelchair, it's just super hard. So I think that's just like, make sure there's enough space in the aisles, make sure there's enough like room between the machines and stuff like that. And then I think like the biggest one for me, honestly, is people not re-racking re their weights. Like so we've got Disability Rights UK did an article about this and they've said, train staff to be more disability confident, hire disabled people. No brainer. Who'd Makes have sense. thought? Who'd have thought? <laughs> have a variety of gym equipment. Yeah. Good ventilation accessible changing rooms and just tidy spaces you like no random weights on the floor or plates or whatever <laughs> come on daddy i'm coming come in i'm coming sick so last couple of questions for you okay so obviously the paralympics and the olympics are happening this year big time in sports and like general media how do you think brands can like best leverage this especially with the Paralympics coming up. It's like a time that comes around every four years where disability is firmly put on the agenda and there's a real conversation in and around it and a lot more disabled people get airtime on like TV and billboards and like social campaigns and everything in between. I think it, it's a perfect springboard it's the perfect time to get started and then you can push on and continue your journey from there. Info at purplegoatagency.com <laughs> Yeah, hit us up if you uh, need some help with your representation. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs>